So most new real estate investors suck when they're talking on the phone. So in this video, I'm gonna help you suck less. All right, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Cody Sperber, the Clever Investor here. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna go over the 15 most important open-ended questions that you should write down and ask the next time you're on the phone with the motivated seller. For those of you that don't know me, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, people that subscribe to this channel, like the videos, engage with the videos, they're the winners in life. They're the, uh, the real estate ballers. They're the ones that want to go further faster. So I commend you for being here. Make sure you uh, turn on post notifications. I am giving away those Amazon gift cards. Uh, here's last uh, video's winner. And, uh, you know, congratulations. Good job. Post notifications. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly new to YouTube. I've only really been on YouTube for about four months. And I've learned a thing or two. You don't see the videos unless you turn on post notifications and you don't get the most out of life unless you take massive action on the information that you learn in the video. So I hope you get something from this. Uh, I had knee surgery. Let's see if I can fucking get my knee up. Oh, look at that sexy white kind of creepy leg. Yeah, so I had some knee surgery uh, five days ago. So I'm kind of gimping around, but I'm committed to your success. That's why I'm here right now over the last 14, almost 15 years now, I've dialed in the specific 15 questions that I ask every single motivated seller. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all 15 of those. Uh, this is actually part of our Your First Flip training system. I'll put a link down below. If you're brand new to real estate, I don't care if you've never done a deal before, you're brand new, you barely know anything about real estate except for it makes a lot of people a lot of freaking money, but you're interested in it, you can be totally skeptical. Uh, I'm telling you right now, best training in the game. Click the link down below and watch the free web class. It's gonna break down how my business systems uh, are all set up and how to get your first flip as fast as humanly possible. I'm talking like within the first 30 days of you starting your business. So click the link and check that out. So this is part of that training. And uh, uh, I'm just gonna dive right in. So he here's the concept. As we're out generating leads, building relationships, networking, whether you're door knocking, cold calling, DMing for dollars, driving for dollars, direct mail, pay-per-click, social media, uh, uh, using ringless voicemail, no matter what you're doing, at some point you have to talk to people. That's the number one skill in this business that you have to dial in, talking to people. And it's scary when you're new when you can't anticipate where to take the conversations and when you don't know what to say next, you start getting scared, the anxiety raises up, you start sweating. My first phone call, believe it or not, was with a person that actually wanted to have a conversation with me, but I was so nervous that I hung up on them the second they started talking. So I understand what it's like to totally be uh, way outside your comfort zone and feel like you're just gonna screw everything up and sound stupid and I'm telling you right now, uh, with a little bit of practice, you'll be fine. Here's the pre-frame before I get into these questions is don't overthink this. The best way to learn this skill is to just pick up the phone and start having conversations. If you get hung up on, I promise you, you're not gonna get hurt. Nobody's gonna reach through the phone and hurt you. You're perfectly safe in the comfort of your you know, own home, wearing your dress PJs. Just have conversations, put yourself out there and use these 15 questions to kind of help lead you uh, towards getting the information that you need. And once you, once you do that, even if you don't have a perfect script, even if you don't sound perfect, I promise you, if you just ask these questions, you'll uh, get them talking. Because the ultimate goal is to ask open-ended questions uh, and uh, get the person that you're talking to to just open up about their hopes, their dreams, their fears, their situation. And a good negotiator understands that it's really hard to negotiate when you don't have that information. And uh, a lot of people have heard, whoever speaks first in a negotiation loses. 
Uh, that is somewhat true when it comes to if you just go right in for price, but the reality is you shouldn't go right in for price. That's the biggest mistake new investors make is they get on the phone with the seller, they spew out all the benefits, uh, I buy cash, I close quickly, close on a day to your choice, no repairs, and they spew out all these benefits and then they go right for the price negotiation where I come into a conversation and I don't even talk price. Uh, if it is, it's towards the end of the conversation and I definitely don't negotiate and I definitely never make the seller wrong on that first phone call. It's all about asking open-ended questions. So without further ado, let's dive in. Um, there's 15 of these. I don't ask all 15 in every single conversation, but I do ask quite a bit of these. And like I said, the goal is to just extract information. Your job is to ask questions, their job is to answer questions. If you find yourself reversed, then you know that you've lost control of the conversation and you need to take back control by asking some of these questions. So if I was you, I'd write these down, print them out, uh, or have them next to your phone and your computer while you're having these conversations. Whatever you do, do not ask questions and type back into your database or your spreadsheets or whatever you're doing to take notes. I would take handwritten notes on a blank piece of paper, a yellow legal pad, or a lead intake form if you're one of my students. With that said, first question that, uh, and they're all pretty much what and how questions. The first question that I want you to write down is what's happening in your life to make you wanna sell your house to me here today? The reason we ask that question is we wanna get them talking about what are their motivations for wanting to sell their property. It's a pretty open-ended question. Whatever they say, they might say something as simple as, we just wanna cash out and move on. Uh, it's none of your business. It's because of this, this, and this. Whatever their reason is, my follow-up question always is, tell me more about that. All right, so every time I ask a question, I get them talking. It's a what or how question. I get them talking, and then I follow up with, tell me more about that. My goal is sometimes they'll say part of the information, but if you keep probing or you keep encouraging them to keep talking, the rest of the information naturally starts to come out. So what's happening in your life to make you wanna sell your house to me here today? They start talking, tell me more about that. The next one, what are some of the biggest challenges you are facing right now to selling your property? I like to put them in a position where they, they might not be any challenges until you ask them what are their challenges and then they start thinking about it and they're like, oh, well, I don't know, I, I, I don't really have any challenges. Oh, okay, so have you had any offers? Oh, no, 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 I haven't had any offers. Okay, so what do you think is preventing you from getting an offer? And what happens is they start internalizing like, oh man, I guess maybe there are some challenges to selling my property. What else have you done to try and solve this problem? Right? I, I like to use the word problem. What else have you done to try and solve this problem? Have you talked with any real estate agents or thought about selling traditionally? This is almost a takeaway question. I like to clear out the objections that I know will potentially come in the future. Clear those out early in the conversation. I'm telling you right now, I love objections. If they're throwing out no's and, you know, I got to talk to other people and, uh, you know, I might sell through a real estate agent. If I can clear all of those out early in the conversation, I love that. Because if they're still talking to me after that, there's room for a potential deal there. So question once again is, what else have you done to try and solve the problem? And have you talked with any real estate agents or thought about selling traditionally? I wanna eliminate that objection of, well, I might sell traditionally. Let's just clear that out. There, one of two things is gonna happen. They're either gonna say, I don't wanna sell through a real estate agent. I don't wanna pay commissions. I've had bad experiences. I don't wanna do open houses, something negative. Or they're gonna say, well, maybe I will. And then at least I know going in that uh, I need to address that further. And I need to, at some point, explain the difference between selling traditionally and selling to an investor. Not now, I'm not, it's not like, bring up the problem and solve it immediately. It's bring up the problem so I know how they're thinking so that way in later conversations I can keep anchoring my position to get the ball down the field. What are the biggest issues with the house? What repairs are needed? All right, obviously we can ask common questions all day long. 
beds, bath, square foot, one story, two story. Do you have a pool, no pool, garage, no garage. Uh, but most of that information we can get from the tax records. That's public information. I care more about understanding repairs. Now, sometimes I go right for tell me about the repairs. What, what issues are going on with the house? What repairs are needed? And sometimes I reverse it and I say, tell me about some of the parts of the house that you really love. Tell me about the good parts of the house. Have you remodeled any sections? Or are there any key selling features that you love about your house? It puts them in a power, perceived power position where they start telling you all the things they love about the house, which will make them more open to tell you about the things that they don't like uh, with the house itself. Sometimes I go right for repairs, but I don't spend too much time on the basics. I try to get over into the repairs needed uh, as quick as possible. These are softball questions up to this point. We're not asking them any personal data, nothing that would cause them to go, whoa, 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 stranger danger, right? These are just open-ended questions that are kind of softball questions where they feel comfortable uh, answering because it has to do with the property. All right, next question. What about your situation where you're hoping I can help you with? I love that question. If I'm doing ringless voicemail or I'm sending out uh, direct mail or having inbound calls from any source, online source, bandit signs, whatever that is, that's a perfect question to ask an inbound motivated seller. Now, if it's outbound, it could sound a little awkward, right? It's like, yo, you called me. So maybe eliminate that one if it's an outbound call. But if it's inbound, I love that question because it puts them in a position where they have to kind of justify their thinking and what they're hoping for right? We're always trying to future cast and, and do two things. One, understand where they're driving towards. And two, we're trying to kind of future cast where we want them to go, all right, at the same time. So you can't do that unless you ask these types of questions. How would selling to me affect your family? Put them in an emotional state. How would selling to me affect your family? Oh, they love it. They're on board. Great. By the way, is there any other decision makers that need to be involved in this conversation? All right, since we're talking about family, maybe they say, oh, the house is in a trust, or yeah, my wife's on title, or no, nope, my wife will go along, or my husband will go along with anything that I decide. Whatever that is, let's clear that out early and make a note so that way we know what we're dealing with. If we have to get another decision maker involved, we wanna do that early on in the conversation. Uh, here's another good one. What's your backup plan if you can't find a buyer for your property quickly? Let's try to figure out what their uh, initial thoughts are. Maybe they think, Go, I'm gonna sell through a real estate agent. Maybe they think, I'm just gonna put it up for sale by owner. Maybe they're like, hey, if I don't find a buyer by next week, I'm just gonna take it off the market. It's good for us to know what their plans are, and that's how uh, you find that out. What's your backup plan if you can't find a buyer for your property quickly? Next question. Where do you plan on moving to once you sell your house and get your cash or get your money? Uh, this is a intention question. Uh, we're always trying to find out how motivated they are, right? Figure out what their hot buttons are. And then we want to uh, figure out what their plans are so we can figure out time frame. Uh, if I know how fast they want to move, that will help me position my offer to help them achieve that goal. If they're in no hurry, I either have to find reasons why they should be in a hurry or I need to change my pace and my tonality and everything to slow the conversation down and make it feel like I'm in no big hurry as well so that way they feel comfortable. Are you at a place emotionally that if you received an all cash offer here today that was a fair offer and you got your cash that you needed quickly are you ready to okay an agreement here today? A couple things with that one. That is a qualifier question. Are you really emotionally at a place where you're ready to do a deal? Good to know. Also, uh, I don't use the word contract or sign a contract. I think that's a very harsh commitment. I like okay an agreement. It sounds way more palatable and it makes me feel like we're collaborating versus I'm trying to convince you to do something, all right? Great question, definitely ask that one. Uh, another one that kind of goes along with this um, is how committed are you to getting this done quickly? Another question is what's more important to you, price or terms? Sometimes if I get the feeling that either they're a Mr. or Mrs. Know-it-all and uh, they are already, maybe they're a previous real estate agent or they're retired or they are an active real estate investor or real estate agent, 
um, I could just talk to them directly. They probably know what price or terms means. Um, they probably already have some feelings and thoughts about what they're trying to accomplish. I like to give them perceived control, even though I'm the one asking the questions and forcing them down the path I want them to take, they feel like they're in control when you ask questions like that. So what's more important to you, price or terms? If I get a feeling they're gonna be stuck on price, that means I can come in with the creative terms offer and get better terms if I give them the price or close to the price they want. Vice versa, maybe they're like, hey, uh, I don't really care about price. I care about terms. I need you to close quickly or I wanna do a carry back with you or whatever their terms are that are very important to them, I need to know that early on. Uh, how would you like me to proceed? Am I giving up control when I ask them that? How, how would you like me to uh, proceed? No, I'm actually in more control now than ever, right? It's just perceived control. Uh, what are our next steps is another uh, way to ask that question. What are our next steps here? What do you see our next steps being? What would you need to see from me to make this work? I love that question. Is there anything else you want me to tell me so I can better understand your needs? 15 amazing questions, all designed to open up the seller, get them talking, get them communicating what their hopes are, their fears are, their dreams are, their needs are. When you understand that, that's when you can powerfully negotiate and put yourself in a position to get the deal. They're gonna feel heard, they're gonna feel understood, you're gonna create better rapport because you asked the right types of questions and you didn't do what every other new real estate you know, investor does and go right for price, go right into a negotiation, go right into explaining all the benefits that you bring to the table. You've uh, actually done your due diligence at this point. You can get off that phone call and go and do your research and start to craft and position the next conversation. And I'm gonna leave you with one bonus thought. First off, what do you guys think? If you wanna hear my bonus thought right now, I want you to smash that like button. Don't leave me hanging. I'm hooking you guys up big time. I've sat at over 5,000 kitchen tables over the last 15 years and uh, perfected these questions over time. So if you got something from this and you took those notes, smash that like button right now for me. And here's the bonus thought. Think of you having a magic wand, right? If you could wave your magic wand and create the perfect deal for the seller, what would that look like? I like to ask that kind of question towards the end of that first conversation because it really gets them thinking, wow, this person really wants to do a win-win deal with me. They want me to be understood and they really wanna know what I'm trying to accomplish. So don't be afraid at the very end, just say, you know what, Bob? You know, I was just sitting here thinking, uh, I really like you, I like your property, I like the, the neighborhood that it's in, I've done a lot of deals in this area, and my business partner is uh, very excited and really pushing me to spend some of the money that we have right now to buy one or two or three houses within the next 30 days in your neighborhood. Um, just shoot to me straight. If I had a magic wand and I was able to wave it and give you the perfect deal, the deal that just makes perfect sense to you that you would feel comfortable okaying here today, what would that deal look like? and just put it back on them, let them say whatever they say, and take that information, write it down, and get off the phone with them, and just know that you've done your job opening them up and getting all the information that you need so you can powerfully come back in a future conversation and get that deal. That's all I have for you here today. I hope you got something from this. I gotta go ice this knee, and uh, you know, thank God for my systems and my processes. I don't have to work today. This is, this is as much work as I'm doing today uh, because I got great systems and processes in my real estate business. It's still cranking along. We're still closing deals, making money, and having fun. That's exactly what I want to help you do. So click that link down below. Get the training in your hands, the best training in the game. And until next video, I'm Cody Sperber, the Clever Investor, signing off for now. Take care. Comb your hair. Sperber out. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. Hey, listen, while you're here, why don't you click the tab in the upper right-hand corner and grab my new book, How to Flip Houses with Little No Money Down. It's a step-by-step -step guide on how I got wealthy in real estate and how you can too. Hope it helps. Oh, don't forget to watch the two videos also.